Hi, this is Alex Paul with Aspen Core Media, and I'm with another friend of mine, another Alex, uh, Alex Everka. He is the uh, CEO of AMS. And, uh, well, hey, Alex, I'm really glad you had time to meet me at this show. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much. Well, you know, a lot of people's attentions are on AMS. The last time we had a video, it got a lot of attention because you're moving, things are happening, and people are interested. So, what do you have here today? Yeah. I mean, we showed today most, or most of differentiated technologies and products. Um, what we do is we develop very innovative products and in, uh, technologies based on optical competencies, imaging, and, and audio. We choose one platform where we introduce new technologies. For example, if you take the, the next uh, the mobile phone, where parts of our 3D sensing competence are included, we take this knowledge and bring it to other vertical market segments. And one of those is behind you, the automotive industry. Uh, just imagine you have face recognition in the car, in cabin. So you sit in the car, the car recognizes you as a driver for security reasons, but also for convenience. Imagine that you sit in the car and the car recognizes you and your seat position is, is done automatically, the rear windows, the GPS is programmed, and it's very convenient. If you look a few years ahead and people taking more car sharing, you change your car three, five, six times a day. And if every time you change your car, you have to adjust your seat position, you have to adjust the mirrors, program your home address, your office address, that's very cumbersome. With our technology, you don't need to do this anymore. You, you book your car, you pay via your face ID, you sit in the car, you get recognized as the, as the guy who, who booked it, as a driver, everything is programmed already in front of you, and you just drive your own car. So it's much more convenient. Well, and I'm, I'm, I'm gathering that could probably be integrated also into the autonomous driving systems that monitor the driver to make sure that they're paying attention, for example. Exactly. Eye tracking, for example, with our technology of 3D sensing, but also the non-eye technology, very small miniature camera, can, can track your, your, your eyes, whether you're alerted, where you're not falling asleep, where you're taking care of, uh, of the car, but also capacitive sensors uh, can recognize where you really touch the steering wheel uh, or the way you're distracted with something else. Uh, so we have a lot of technologies for the automotive industry for application which doesn't, didn't exist in the past. So our intention is to create new applications. I give you another example which is behind you. Um, for micro lens arrays. So when you look in some high-end cars, when you open the car, you unlock the car, you have a light carpet in front of you, which shows you the way to the car, which shows you whether it is a, a muddy, muddy way or you have something in front of you. And it's a nice feeling and nice branding for the cars to put their logo into the light carpet. We can use the same technology for the indicator, where it's not only the light in the, in the lamp, which is lighting up, but also projected on the floor. When you are a pedestrian or your bicycle rider, you see it in front of you that the car turns right and you're not bumping into a car. So for a lot of safety ring or imagine the third braking light, which is projected to the floor, which you can see when it's foggy or high raining. So a lot of technologies can be used for application where nobody thought about this. And we want to be the first and we want to capture the market. And it works. That's why the company is growing so fast. That's why we grew last year 94% and we have an outrageous growth this year. Um, it works. See, now, okay, Alex, one of the things that I'd like to point out and I want you to elaborate on for me, please, if you want, is the aspect of everyone's debating about electrical cars and powertrain. But if you ignore the powertrain, there could be a V8 engine under there. The rest of the car is going to be electronic. Yes. It's, it's not the engine which is interesting for us. Of course, there's a major breakthrough in the industry, but it's the convenience, it's the safety. It's basically you, you bring your office to the car, you bring your home into the car, and the other way around, seamlessly connected. This is what, we, what we're supporting and where we create uh, applications which helps people. That's why our tagline is Sensing is Life. We want to make life more secure, more safe, more convenient, for people. That's what we have attention. Very cool, Alex. Now, what are some of the other application spaces that you're making some inroads into now with some of your new sensor solutions? Take the metal space, for an example. We have a demonstrator here with, with the heart, where you uh, use the, the uh, very small miniature camera, Nanai, to go into the blood vessels to check out your, your organs. Uh, we use this today for disposable endoscopy. Uh, you use a capsule and you throw it away. But imagine that you combine this technology with spectral sensing, that not only visually you see it, but you can analyze it on the way through the body. 
imagine you combine this technology with 3D sensing, that you measure the size of what you see in your body, no? whether it's growing, not growing. When you have a camera and, and put it very near to the object, it it's, looks very big. But the actual size is different. But if you have with 3D sensing, you can measure it. It's a very unique uh, situation you can create there. No? Well, I, and all the time I've been in Munich in that worst and sausage and dumplings, I think I might need that heart monitor myself there. <laughs> but and, and there's another thing, when you look at our bio, biosensor technology, uh, where you, we have a product which will be metal grade in Q2 next year. Um, very high precision of blood pressure, heart availability, pulse, uh, measuring all the vital signs. We do the hardware, we do the software, do the app on the phone. It's, it's, it's a device connected via Bluetooth with your phone. You can use any kind of phone. And on a daily basis, you measure your vital functions. Imagine you put this in the steering wheel. You're driving your car and you measure your vital functions. And when you do this on a regular basis, without your own doing, then you know your trend for your, for your vital functions. And if the software recognizes something is going wrong, if you get an alert, please go for a checkup. So it really preserves life. Huh? And, and well, then that brings another question to mind, Alex. With all of these prosumer, I would call it. You know, they're, they're, they're not medical devices, but they're measuring medical status. So what is your position on making all wearables medically qualified? Or all of those biometric systems, making them at least marginally medically qualified so that they're reliable and they can be trusted by doctors in the case of this, instead of warning light level uh, management of health? Well, the first step is what I just told you, the small accessory. I can even show you. Oh, very cool. It's a device which looks like this. It's a demonstrator. You connect it via Bluetooth to any kind of mobile phone. You touch it here and put your finger on it, and all vital functions get measured. This device can be metal, medical certified, medical right. grade. Yeah? Um, it's important because it's, it's, it's a process to get this certification. So it doesn't make sense if you do it for a product which has a lifetime for one or two years. So you should do it for a product which has a longer lifetime. Mm -hmm. yeah? But a lot of Fitbits and those type of devices are short lifetime. You can do this. Yeah? So, and certainly this is the intention that, that we should think to get this good certification for a broader uh, base of products. Um, but it also depends what consumer wants to do with it. Yeah? But over time, I, I think that's a trend. Yeah? People want to know the health status. They want to know what I can do to prolong my life, to have a better life. And I can tell you insurance companies are very interested in this because they save a lot of money to make sure long-term diseases are not appearing. Yeah? Well, and I've seen some demonstrations on that where the person's looking at a mirror and it tells them what the weather is and it tells them what their heart rate is and their blood glucose because it sampled it when they were on the toilet this morning, you know? <laughs> exactly. So it's twice what you do uh, the last evening. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, is there anything that you wanted to leave with our audience before we let you go for the day? Well, we talked about medical, we talked about automotive, but we're also very active in the industrial space. Huh? And uh, when you think about a big business we are seeing in the automotive space, like 3D LiDAR, where we're very active and we see is, this is probably the second largest growth engine for the company, this goes into industrial. And we expect that the industrial markets for LiDAR applications we will probably 4x the market of automotive in the second second half of uh, 2020. So it's it's a very sizable market, and it underpins our strategy: create innovative solution, find the first high volume platform, and then you deploy it in all working market segments. That drives growth, and that works. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Alex. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure being here.